What's up? up? This is Draco. And this is Alicia. And you're now tuned in to OD, OD Podcast. Podcast. Oh, <laughs> Period. <laughs> okay, well, let's follow the protocol. All right, how your week been? Um, I will say that I'm very grateful because these last two weeks have been killing me. I thought that I was going to have to go to the hospital a few times because I couldn't breathe. I'm almost 150% sure I had RSV um, because... Not almost, and then you said 150%. Oh, I had RSV, yeah, because I've never... So, as a child, I, my mom smoked cigarettes. So, as a kid around, like, third grade, um, I had asthma because of that because I was getting secondhand smoke. And so, after that, my mom stopped smoking around me and stopped smoking in the house, and it just kind of faded away. But since then, I've never had any, like, breathing issues. And when I tell you, even with COVID, the only thing that that was bad with COVID was the cough. Like, the cough just hurt so bad because it's so, you know, you coughing all the time. But this was different. This was like, every time I would lay down to go to sleep, I thought that I was going to stop breathing. Like, Oh, Lord. So how did you get comfortable enough to go to sleep? Um... I would literally take, so it's so ghetto because I was waiting for my, um, my insurance to, um, activate. So I ended up getting, uh, Mm -hmm. Medi-Cal and so I was waiting for it to activate. So in the meantime, I was like, just, I have a steamer, like a, um, face steamer. So I was putting Vicks in there and just steaming my face before I go to sleep so that I can breathe. Um, I would take aspirin to take down the swelling. Like I felt like everything in here was just swollen. So when I would take it, I would feel better. The problem was that once I once the swelling went down, like once I felt like the swelling went down, I would feel so weak. It was a mess. Like it was just all over the place. The first week, um, it was really bad. Like the first three days, and then it had went away or seemed like it went away for like four days, and then it just came back. And so since Friday, I've been feeling better. Like a hundred percent better. Yeah, RSV cases have been popping up, and I had never heard of it before this year. But so many people have had it, so many kids, and I think I can't remember the percentage, but there was like a dramatic increase of people coming, like kids coming to the hospital with it. And it just makes me wonder if it's associated with COVID, like long term effects of it, or or you know what could be the cause. I know a couple people that had it and they felt like terrible. Like I know somebody who had to get like a steroid shot from the doctor just to be able to breathe. Yeah, it was like, it was bad. Crazy. It was bad. Yeah. Like I'm low key scared to fly, and I have to fly some uh, Thursday. I'm scared to fly, Lord. I ain't gonna lie. Well, just wear your mask, child. Wear your mask. Mm-hmm. It just, you know, protect yourself. But I feel you, yeah, it is scary though for real, for real. And I don't really know. I haven't seen anything explaining like anything ab- about it. Like I haven't even looked into the research, but it is scary. And um, I don't like being sick. I don't want to be sick. Even though I may say I'm sick to get out of work. What I mean is I'm sick of working <laughs> when I feel um, that. Oh yeah. So I definitely, yeah, I don't, I don't like being sick at all. I'm such a baby when it's, when I'm sick. And then I, I'm just not the type of person. I hate medicine. I hate taking medicine. I hate how medicine makes me feel and I'm dramatic. So the medicine probably isn't making me feel that type of way, but I'm in my head. I'm like, this is what is like. This is because I took that damn medicine. <laughs> That's funny. I was thinking like, have I ever took a medicine that made me feel like I knew I took medicine? I don't think like, so. Like, okay, Mucinex. Oh. Oh yeah, but see that's I feel you. that has a that has to me that's that's a good feeling though. You don't think that you feel better? It made me or feel just like high. Like oh, like it okay. makes me feel like I don't feel right. I don't, I never take medicine. Like I don't take medicine for anything except headaches because I just cannot deal with a headache. Um, is there anything that would make you check take a medicine? And the only reason why I ask is because I've seen a lot of people um have like illnesses and they refuse to take medicine or hospital treatment and then. Ultimately, they end up deciding to do it, but it's because they had got like they basically their method they tried. Basically, I I um I align with people who take holistic approaches, but I do think that modern medicine is also necessary. That's yeah. just my opinion. But I'm curious to know what is do you have like a, a boundary or a threshold? Um, or RSV definitely was about to make me put every put all the shit in there, whatever you need, because. Yeah. You know, I was just waiting for my insurance to kick in, and, and it kicked in at the last minute when I'm like feeling way better. So I'm like, whatever. 
But if I would have went to the hospital, I would have just did whatever they told me. Until it gets to a point like that, then yes, I would definitely consider medicine. But if it's anything that I can control, um, I try to take the holistic and the natural way about everything. Like even with, um, it's a you know, just my vitamins. Like I don't take any store bought vitamins at all. Like the ones that uh, are like generic, I don't take it. And the one time that I did because I had ran out and I just felt the need, like I'm lacking today. I need to take a vitamin. I literally took the vitamin and threw up at the barbershop 20 minutes later. So oh, Lord. you might be pregnant. No, I just don't take that stuff. Um, but yeah, I had a really weird weekend. So, um, I think I told y'all before that I have a manager now. And so my manager is stressing the fact that I need to be at all of these events that are going around LA. And I agree. Um, but it's just so hard coming from Atlanta. Like I'm such a one, one or two event a week type of person. And it's stuff going on in LA every day, sometimes multiple things a day you know child one or two a week got me yes tired. Let, a quarter, let me man. having one me so tired quarter. alicia so i'm like in my head i'm like this is why people do cocaine out here this is, this okay. is actually why okay. now i wouldn't do it i don't even take medicine so i'm not taking no damn coke um so the other day like once i start feeling better <clears throat> i ended up getting invited to the avatar premiere that same day, I got invited to five events, and I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to do it. So I ended up doing that. I went to all five of them. The last one, I literally was falling asleep in it, so I had to go. Like, standing up, falling asleep. I was burnt out. Um, I tried to do the same thing on Sunday because it was um, everybody was having Christmas parties and stuff like that. And I feel bad because a lot of people went back home already for the holidays, so people's Christmas parties weren't as lit as they wanted to be. So I'm like, let me just show up for my people that invited me out. I don't never go nowhere. So let me just do it. Child, I I went to the first event and I was supposed to go to two after this. I was like, <clears throat> honestly, this is it for me. After the first one, I'm like, I'm going home. Like I've I just wasn't feeling it. I was I was I was enjoying the party, but I'm like, I've had a little too much to drink. Um, you know. I'm fine with how I'm feeling right now. I can just go home. So I was going to do that. So I was typing up a text to my friend, just let him know I wasn't coming. And he sent a text in a group just like, y'all knew about this all day. Y'all, da 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 Because he paid for a section at the club. And I'm like, fuck. Like, he always support me with everything I do. So I'm like, let me just go for a little minute. The pressure is the getting The pressure worse. is getting worse. So... Keep in mind, I didn't even want to go here at all. The spirit just was telling me to take your ass home. That's literally what they were saying in my head. Like, take your behind home. I got to the club, paid to get in. I literally had to pee. I walked in the door. I was like, I got to pee so bad. Went to the bathroom, came out of the bathroom. So the, the, the way the bathroom is, you walk down a hallway, and then you walk onto the dance floor where everybody is at. Literally stepped on the dance floor. And somebody threw up on me. Oh, that. Take me to the king. So I didn't even realize. Was it, was it like bad? Huh? Was it like bad? Like how? So much I didn't. Was I didn't know the severity of it because I felt it on my legs. I had on shorts, so I felt something splash on my leg, and I was. I thought it was a drink. But because it was kind of, it was clear, but it had stuff in it. So I'm looking, I'm like, that's not a drink. So when I looked up, I saw the boy carrying his friend and he was still throwing up. So I was like, no, he threw up on me. So I'm thinking that he just threw up on my shoes. So I went to the bar and it's dark in there and I didn't feel it anywhere else, but I did have on like a button up shirt and a, and a cardigan. So it was thick. <laughs> I went to the bathroom, poured the water on my shoes to clean it off, like clean off my leg. I was like, I'm going home. So I walked over to the bar, I mean, to the area where my friends were just to let them know I came, you know, show face. I'm about to go. I was like, somebody just threw up on me. I'm finna go home. I just came over here to let y'all know. Da, da, da. So my friend's boyfriend is like pulling me in the sex. She's like, just stay. It's gone. You washed it off. Da, 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 da. So, That's absolutely He was not. like, just stay. He was like, just have a drink at least and da, da, before you go. I don't like people like that. No shade to that person. But if I say what I'm finna do, that's what I'm finna do. So people started noticing that I was in there. So 
they would like hug me, right? So this one boy was like, "Why your sweater wet?" <laughs> I looked on my fucking arm. It was throw up all down my arm. It was. I looked down. You can smell no, it. I didn't know it was there. Well, I'm about to throw Alicia, up. Alicia, I looked down to get um to get like my phone out of my pocket. Both legs of my pants are covered in throw up. I didn't. No, it's the not. The front part of my shorts. I didn't know. Mm-mm. I Mm-mm. I looked. At, I put the flashlight on my pants. I said, "Bro, I'm getting out of here. I have to go now." I said, "This is disgusting." Yeah. And they kept trying to like keep me in. I I was so yeah, mad because why would y'all want me to be here with throw up on me? That is so uncomfortable. They kept saying, "Well, we don't smell it. We don't smell it. You're fine." Oh my this god. This is somebody. This ain't even my vomit. This is from somebody else. Friends and I show you your future. So, yeah, it was just really weird. We had this weird boy come in the section and like start being weird to me because he's he's friends with somebody who I'm no longer cool to with and he was like being very weird mm. to start drama. I'm so tired of people, y'all. But yeah. Other than that, the weekend was cool, and I had fun. Um, I did not watch the Avatar movie. I, I left after they said it was three hours. Um, so I didn't watch the movie, but I did go to so the premiere. It was fun. I hate that I went alone, but whatever. All right. Well, I did go see Avatar. I took my grandma on Friday. Did you enjoy it, though? We turned. We cut up. Did, was, huh? did you enjoy it, though? Yeah, I like Avatar. It took them long enough to, to do this sequel, but um, yeah, it was really good. It is really long, but I will say I did not notice that it was long. The movie is that good that you don't even notice that it's long for real, for real. It's just a story. Oh, wow. and, I mean, a really good story. Yeah. Hazel, not tonight. But um, let me tell you something. So while you was telling me that story, if I seemed like I was looking at my phone, it's because I was, because I just got a... Uh, um, so I use this app called Dosh. Long story short, you link your credit cards to Dosh. Anytime you make a purchase at a certain place, you get cash back. Well, it just thanked me for my lift ride today. And um You didn't catch a lift. I ain't catch a lift. <laughs> for twenty four dollars and fifty six cents. And so it doesn't tell me what card was used. It's just giving me credit for that transaction. And I just checked all of my accounts and I don't even see it. So now I have so many accounts. I'm gonna have to really just go to all the logins and try to figure That's it out. That's insane. And if I'm a little background story before I get into it. I went to Wendy's twice in the last seven days, and both times I felt like they had my card too long. And I remember the first time it happened, I was like, you know, I don't know. I just didn't, I didn't feel uncomfortable, but it did make me realize, like, dang, girl, can't get my card back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I went to back. Today was that second time that I went. And um, he spoke to me. I said, hey, um, I didn't want to. It was awkward because you ever talk to somebody? Now, now, I could be reaching, but sometimes if a dude say, hey, it's one way to say, hey, it's another way to be like, oh, how you doing? It was giving yeah. that. So I just started looking at my phone in like a nervous like response. And I had thought about the last time I came in, it was a girl. I feel like the same thing was going on. So this is going to confirm my suspicions. But the card that I use both transactions is not showing any activity. So we're going to see. But uh, anyways, I did take my grandma to see Avatar. We uh, we went to, a, we actually, um. So I've never been a big movie person, but I do like what the movie industry is doing to enhance the experience. So like better chairs, better food, um, better uh, options, I guess, to watch. Movie. Hazel, what are you doing? Come on now, baby girl. <laughs> She's just like fixated on this spot on the rug, which I know don't have nothing on it. But anyway, so we went to um this theater on the east side, Madison Yards. Basically, it's over off Memorial, but it was really cute. It was in a cute little, um like, you know what? I love some of the changes coming to Atlanta, but I hate that they all look the same. What you mean? When I tell you, I thought I was at. Huh? What you mean? Like the design of the food places, the design of these buildings, the the architecture. I thought I was at Pond City Market. Wouldn't even know. You was at Collins Square. That's. No, I was uh, I was on Memorial off of um. Uh, I don't even remember. Park Street. I was close to um. I don't even. I don't okay. know. 
All I know is I never been to this area before that I was at, and I thought it was another area. And I just hate it because you go to these different parts of Atlanta, and they have the same style of apartment buildings, the same style. And I guess that just comes with the times. But to me, it, they really took away the uniqueness and the identity of those areas to replace it with this cookie cutter layout. And it might be all fresh and new and all that, but it just is very generic. I don't, I don't like. I literally didn't know where I was at in my own city. But anyway, so we did see Avatar was cool. We had some popcorn. And we just hung out or whatever. And so um, that was cool. Um, In addition to that, so Smyrna has this thing where people can basically say, hey, I dedicated, I, mean, I de dedicated, I decorated my house for the holidays. You guys should come and check it out. So they created this little list for anybody. If you want to go like on a house tour, you could basically plug in these addresses and drive around and see how that were decorated. Now, some of them folks know they was dead wrong, okay? <laughs> Thankfully, part of the registration, you do have to put a picture of your house. So you can choose. But I think that's so cool. I wish that could be like a, a statewide thing or something like that. Maybe it is, and I don't know about it. But I think it's really cool because even even driving on those houses, there were other houses that weren't registered. And you could just kind of... It just was cool. You know, just like a yeah. little... Not not a true light show, but essentially it was. So I did that. Um, I wrapped up my Christmas shopping. I really didn't have much to buy this year. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And um, on top of that, I got tickets to see Janet Jackson. I'm very, okay. very, very. Oh, man, I heard that show be bumping. Baby, I'm going to see Usher and Janet Jackson. All I need is Stevie Wonder and Jasmine Sullivan, and I don't got to go to no more concerts. Yeah. Um, who do I want to see? I got a few. I actually really enjoy concerts and festivals, so I will probably will do that for the, for the rest of my life. I can't rock with the festival stuff. I love so it, I but that's so far. I want to go to Janet Jackson show. Listen, I was so excited. I couldn't even believe it. And I got some good seats too. And I thought they were going to be way more expensive than they were. But I'm really excited for that. Um, So that's going to be the first, first half of the year. I think I've decided on where I want to go for my birthday. So for several years, I have always wanted to visit the Ice Hotel in Quebec City, which is in Canada. And um, I always put it off because there are no nonstop flights from Atlanta to Quebec. And I hate layovers. If you know me, you know I do not like the part where the plane take off. If I can just do it one time for the rest of my life and then magically be on a plane then I'll be good. I can't do a layover. I will literally spend 300 times the price to keep from having oh to do that. I know God. that's crazy. I will say, when I went to Kenya, that layover worked in my favor because it was like 19, 20 hours. So I would do eight hours to this country, chill for a couple hours. That helped. And also, the, you know, the, those were overnight flights. But in, if I'm going somewhere three and a half hours away, I'm not about to spend six hours getting there because you got a darn layover. But with my research, I discovered that Delta has a nonstop flight from Atlanta to Montreal, and I can take a train, a scenic train, for two and a half hours from Montreal to Quebec City. So basically, I can get two cities <coughs> in one on the trip. And that's great. Oh, that's I ain't cool, yeah. to fly one plane. So I really, I always wanted to go. My plan, my last time I attempted to do this was early 2020, but that's when COVID hit. And I'm just like, it just ain't meant for me to go. So now I got, you know, I got my plans. It's going to be real cold there, but that's okay. I got a lot of coats. I don't get to wear. <laughs> so, um, and I'm practicing for that okay. this weekend because oh, this weekend God. Atlanta is giving <clears throat> Canada right now. But yeah, man, so that's what's going on. Um, I'm feeling really confident. I'm feeling more confident at work this week. Like, you know, like I told y'all before, work has been stressing me out. It's very hard. It's a new thing that I'm learning, but I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with making executive decisions on my own. I had to present to my boss's boss yesterday and I got excellent feedback, which made me feel really good because I only spent a couple minutes pr practicing for this for that presentation, but he got a really good idea on some of the analysis I've been working on and some of the business proposals that we have as a team. So I'm happy to hear about that. So anyway. Oh my God. One of my clients, she had episode. to do something similar to that. She worked for Cadillac and she was okay. doing that. Okay. <laughs> but she also has, she just moved here. So she also had an event to go to. Um, I think it was just a Christmas party, but of course she works remote. So she had to do, she had to present to her boss's boss and they had to present whatever projects that they were working on. But she was getting her makeup done the whole time. And she was the only person with her camera off and she was, you know, she didn't give a damn. <laughs> she was like, I do that every time I get my hair braided or something. I be in that hand and they camera off. Now my job, my new job, they do be on the camera a lot, but it's not an obligation. Yeah. But because I'm always on camera when I'm finally not, they ain't finna yeah. question. All right. So first let's get into the black business of the week. Okay. So this black business of the week is a little different. Um, so a couple of, several weeks ago, I'm sure at this point, I shouted out a black business called my granny's cakes and they are, um, close to the Cumberland mall area. 
And basically, it's a. Uh, I basically I went to this place. I tried their Seven Up cake, which is one of my favorite kind of cakes, and it was so good. And I'm like, oh my god! And I was going every single goddamn day. So I had to like break my habit. Now, last time I went to my granny's cakes, she was like, hey, um, if you want to get a cake for Thanksgiving, you need to put your order in now so it can be ready, blah, blah, blah. And I was thinking like, mm, do I want to do that? But no, because I had already made a bunch of pies. I made some banana bread. I made cookies. I made it. All. I'm like, honey, I don't need to add to the list. But it was on my mind. Like, why didn't I just go and buy that cake? So anyway. I went maybe a week or two ago to like, all right, let me just go scratch my itch or itch my scratch for this cake, whatever it is. And they were closed. And I'm like, dang, you know, some, in the, when they first opened, they had kind of been adjusting their hours. So I would go and they would be closed. No big deal. But I Googled it and it said temporarily closed. I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. Anyways, y'all, man. So I went on their Instagram and saw that the owner was in the hospital. Oh, man. And, um, yeah, so basically she's battling cancer and she does not have any insurance. She quit her job to start her business and she obviously is not able to operate because she is not doing well right now. So I wanted to amplify her, provide her, uh, her. Um, I'll give you her Instagram links and her GoFundMe if you guys want to contribute. But I am um, really over the past year plus i've going there me and her have made connections we her mom or one of her relatives even went and bought like some glasses that i wore not off of me but like went to the same website like when i come in she would know and i even and i have on a mask everything she recognized me every time i come in there and we always chit chat so it really hurt my feelings to see that she was sick um but um her on instagram they can be found at my granny's cakes literally how it sounds but I'll put the information in, in the episode notes along along with the um the GoFundMe and all that. But yeah, man, it's actually really sad. I, hate to hear and that. I wanted to touch. Hmm? I, said I hate to hear stuff like that. Yeah, and I, you know, this was something that crossed my mind. This is not necessarily directed at her, but I I do want everybody to know that you know, thanks to President Obama, we do all have access to some kind of health care now. It will, you know, whether it's based on income, whether it's provided by an employer, but I, you know, when as we get older, we might feel good, but we don't really know what's going on inside of us. And something like cancer, you literally can have it for a long time and not have a single mm. clue. Now, because she's working for herself, I don't know if she didn't know or she didn't think about it. And it don't even matter because at this point, what the problem is is that she need help. And okay, but I just want to take the opportunity to say, you know, obsess over being proactive of your health. If you gotta do, you know. Take, do your annual physicals, get your blood work done, get everything you can get done just so you can know where you stand so you can identify risk early on. If there's any kind of checkup that's necessary for your age group, like for me, pretty soon I'm going to have to start preparing for mammograms. You know, as women, we get um we get uh, pap smears, you know, to check, make sure, I, make sure we ain't got no kind of risk down up in there, make sure our titties ain't got no lumps and stuff like that. Because once you have it, there is no proactive. Now it's mm -hmm. reactive, you know what I'm saying? And it's life or death at that point. And if you don't have insurance... There's not even a whole lot that people can do. And even with all the GoFundMe's in the world, those hospital bills, oh my God, it's $700 just to write your name on a paper at the desk. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, if y'all just have an opportunity, just look into healthcare solution that for your income level, through your job, whatever. Even if you just get an annual physical, I promise y'all, a lot of things can be discovered at that point. I'm not even joking. Nobody's exempt from illness. Nobody's exempt from death. But we are definitely entitled to live this earth as long as possible if we can, you know, control that. Oh. So anyway, please, 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 y'all. I I know sometimes things come with expenses, but it's a lot more expensive to die than it is to be. Um, you know, just imagine, just imagine people that had COVID and they had to go to the hospital and be on a respirator, but they didn't have insurance, so they couldn't even get one. You know what I'm saying? And and that's COVID is something that we didn't even see coming. So you know. Some people might get lucky enough to go distances without having to get that kind of medical um, medical treatment done, but you literally do not know what's going on in your body. Just because you smile and hitting cartwheels and posting on Instagram don't mean a god darn thing. We see it every day. Just like mental health. You look at people, they look happy, and you think things are going well. The whole time they're dealing with depression or something like that. Like, we literally don't know. So, anyhow. Mm -hmm. I just got mine for California. Amen. Yeah, listen, I go every, I get a physical every year around my birthday so I don't forget when my last appointment was. I get, Hannah, I, I don't know. I'm not one of them people that go to the doctor for every little thing because I know some people obsess over, but hey, if it, if you got the coverage, do yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? But if you don't got the coverage, do what you can. Okay, hello, somebody. But all right, let's get into tweets from the streets. Okay, so 
This have sent, I don't know if I first saw this this morning or was it yesterday, but Vulture wrote an, out an article about nepotism babies, calling them nepo babies. And a lot of people's going back and forth because it shared a lot of celebrities who we did not know had parents or other relatives that were in the entertainment industry. And while these people, people were big fans of them, but it seems like finding out that they were, um, you know, products of nepotism, it made them look at them differently. Now, I, you know, maybe I am not i don't know if i'm closed minded i don't know i'm not closed minded for sure but what i'm saying is i don't have a problem with nepotism i feel like there is a reason why we work hard we want others to benefit from it if we have kids we want them to reap those benefits it doesn't necessarily mean give them the opportunity but we have no idea what this what type of work these people put in behind the scenes to get the spot and if we like their work what's the problem yeah I do think that people should get chances that don't have the opportunity to do so, but I'd be doggone if I'm darn Meryl Streep and Lily Streep ain't finna get her shot. I, you know what I'm saying? I do want them to uh, to learn how to work hard. I think that's all about how you decide to raise your kid. But a win is a win, baby girl. Yeah. How you think we got our bank systems, our automobile industry, the alcohol industry? Politics is nepotism. You know what I'm saying? And I and I do think that could be dangerous, don't get me wrong, because people tend to have a lot more control when they got a lot of a lot of fish in the pot. What's I don't even know what the quote is. When they got a lot of hands in the pot. So I do think that can be negative, but I also think the good in that is being able to not have to struggle. It's not struggling is I'm so sick of people pushing the struggle narrative, bro. It is okay for people to not have to struggle. That is a yeah, lovely life. It ain't nothing wrong. I, I, I agree too. Um because I had this conversation a lot with people that I know personally about them being mad at people who um, complain about certain things because they were born into wealth or they were born into a family that had money and they were able to do things like get their college paid for or whatever, like grew up paying a mortgage or your parents owned a business or whatever. A lot of us weren't able to do that and we had to struggle. Like, I do appreciate my struggle but i also i also appreciate seeing stuff like that because why do we have to struggle just because we black or just because you know exactly we don't have to do that like and sometimes people grow up in in different environments and that's okay and i feel like people shouldn't look down on people like that just because they were you know they grew up in different in a different situation i don't know i don't like that either no, I agree. And I made a tweet recently because, um, long story short, whenever people have nice things, they be like, oh, must be nice to have your mom pay for everything. Absolutely. It is like, and I, and I think it, this might sound crazy, but it's literally jealousy because you didn't have that opportunity and that's okay. Cause we all have different paths, but I do understand also wanting to be successful so bad, but not feeling like you don't have mm-hmm. a shot, but you got to be creative. I mean, I hate to be that person, but you know, like there are people who didn't make it to the NBA because, oh no, not, I won't use NBA. I think it's the NFL where you have to go to college first. Some people wanted to go to NFL real bad, but they didn't have the ability to go to college. I'm sorry. Those, you know what I'm saying? I wish it wasn't that way, but right now it is that way. So what can you do to combat that? You might have to sacrifice and go to school. You know what I'm saying? And I, I like I said, I hate as somebody that literally struggled. Okay literal literally <laughs> i i understand but when i see these comments about people thinking I, I think it was howard stern the other day that said that he feels like oprah flaunts her luxury life on social media i'm like we talking about oprah the winfrey and let's not forget howard stern is filthy rich his doggone self but he feels like because she'll show her chef her workers that she's like flaunting her wealth she is literally just living her life and that's not our problem that's that's how she lives her life i mean that's just the purpose of like social media in general most of the time people want to know what especially on a, a high level like that people appreciate people bringing you into their life we know oprah is is probably is one of the richest black women on this earth so what do we expect Literally. from her? Exactly. And it's not like she's on the social media like, hey, and why y'all, can't she do that? Got me from, exactly. Extremely humble, at least presenting yeah. that way. But I think that I just think that somebody's confidence or success should not make you feel insecure. I should be able to talk about how attractive I think I am or how much Ooh, I love my girl, body. You, that's, don't a mean that body that's a word. That's a word. Listen. I seen a I seen an exchange between um this girl and this and a, and a person who follows her. Basically, the girl was like talking about how she loved her body because her waist slim, her booty fat. Yes, sis, look, y'all know I said to my how flat my booty is. I got to look good. You think I no. care? 
I'm happy for yeah. her. I'm happy. But it was a girl who replied to her tweet was like, dang, can you just humble yourself? Every some some of us fight depression and when we see stuff, sweetie. I'm very sorry that you're dealing with that. But I'm not dealing with that. And I love my body. And it's and that's not even to push it in her face, but I just need people to not rely on other people for their source of happiness. Like that's yeah. just not how the world goes. And you can't expect to be free from that by everybody dumbing themselves down to appease you, which is probably still not gonna be enough because you're gonna find another thing to, another thing to complain about. But yeah. I think I talked about this girl named Clark on here before where she basically um, is living a luxurious lifestyle in New York as a student at an Ivy League institution, Columbia University. And she was talking about how she got so many scholarships that she get these fat refund checks where she could pay her rent off for the rest of the year. And sharing that content has allowed her to get even more money as being an influencer. But people talk about, no, she got a sugar daddy. She come from rich parents. She she didn't struggle. And it's like, oh, so right, right. Golly. I hate that too. I hate that so much. Y'all are haters. Y'all are literally haters. You think I'm walking around telling people how bad I struggle? I don't even want to think about I call it. That, okay? I call that ancestral trauma because that stuff is trickled back to slavery. I feel like we were just, we, Django. Yeah, we were just taught to, we have to be entertainers. Like we have to be the people that entertain everybody. We're not able to feel ourselves or think that we're beautiful or enjoy our hair or enjoy whatever. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like we all, like I even catch some of some uh, of my peers say things like, "Oh, he need to do something with his hair," and I'm like, "Why?" I'm like, "That that's his look." Why? Because he did do something yeah. with it. Actually, you need to braid it or you need to comb it or you need to do this. That's and when people say that, I'm like, you sound like your grandma. Like, that's <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, baby, you get fat now, right? Yeah, like you sound like your granny. So, I don't, I don't know. It's just, it's just very old school. Um, and I don't like that. I feel like growing up, my mom and my sister and like my aunts and stuff like that. They will always tell me like, "Oh, you're so handsome." Da da da. They always will say this type of stuff, but it's like you can't say that in front of people or feel like, like you. Can, I don't know. It's like you can't compliment yourself around people without them looking at you crazy, or you can't really enjoy. You gotta humble yourself. But why? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. And it all trickles down to the the insecurities of the person on the receiving end. And I, I hate it so much. It just really, it really annoys me. Like there are so many people that are doing well and thanks to social media and thanks to the internet, it is being brought to our presence. And you know, in, in one, one hand, it should kind of encourage you. If that's a lifestyle you want, take some notes. I don't know, but it's just, everybody's not going to make it. And everybody, nobody owes you your, your security. Yeah. I don't mm. like it. But it's weird, and I try not to flaunt, and I try not to brag, and I try not to boast, but that's just because it's my personality, but it has nothing to do with how people might feel about themselves on the receiving end, because I don't. Child, people know where I, know me, they know where I came from, they know what I've been through, so if you see me out here uh, with my shit on, or you see me buying something, or, you know, enjoying certain things, it's you I work, work for it, it and, I'm, and, and this is what I got, and this is what I enjoy. Hopefully you enjoy it. But yeah, I just want to get off my chat. I'm sick of I'm sick of people complaining in the comments. I'm just sick of I'm sick of social media comments. There was a point in my life where I didn't even read YouTube comments. This is before things got a little bit more organized over there. And I'm gonna have to start doing the same thing on social media because it's just it's it annoys me that people are so dumb. Oh anyway. my gosh. So I know is Oprah really on house arrest? No, that's you still ain't that old. That was like 2019. Somebody brought it up recently, and I'm like, wait. No, I don't think that's true. I mean, Oprah Lily's on a tour with uh, Michelle Obama. You're right. Okay, call me back. <laughs> okay. Um, did we talk about T.J. Holmes and Amy, Amy Roback on the last episode? No, I don't even know who that is. Okay, y'all. So, long story short, two of the hosts from a Good Morning America oh, got called. Wait, back we did. We talked we did about talk that. About it. Well, they were seen like a couple of days ago out on the streets holding hands, like <laughs> as if it was like nothing happened. Right. <laughs> That's T. I just hope to God that they was already separated from their spouses when this happened. Cause that is some sloppy mess. It really mess, is. Let me okay? tell you something. Love will make you do some crazy things. You lose your do- your is job. Is it love though? You gotta be. You just lost your job. Well, no, they still have a job. They, they they on hold right now, basically. Child, you think they're coming back? They will if if, if the network yeah. was smart, they'll bring them back together and get them ratings. 
But well, let's be clear. Amy Roback was way more valuable to them than T.J. Holmes, so he can be replaced. And there is a sit-in for them right now, if I'm not mistaken. But I don't think they should get fired unless there's some kind of no fraternization rule, or if they if they were truly separated and it really, you know. Yeah, I don't know. Ah, you know what I'm saying. But okay, cool. <laughs> I just seen them pictures was like, oh, y'all, they was chuckling. I'm like, I wonder what that text three looked they like. They said, now. if you don't get a damn, we don't give a fuck, so. What? Okay, so Brittany Griner is out of Russian prison, okay, and okay. the people was not happy, okay? um, How can I not sound problematic? I am very happy that she is home. I do not think that we won on that trade. Basically, um, they exchanged Brittany Griner for this guy who I can't remember his name anymore. I knew it when I left the note, but basically he, um, they call him the King of War. He was, he was an arms dealer. He distributed guns and weapons all around the world, funded wars, et cetera, et cetera. Now, this is what's funny. People were really coming at President um, Biden about this swap. They felt like he should have tried harder to get the other guy. There's another guy who's also in a Russian prison who, and there's also more, let's be very clear, but. He basically said, the, so the other guy, okay, this is what happened. America was going to try a two-for-one swap for Brittany Griner. So two of American prisoners for one and that, that belongs to Russia, right? Russia was like, oh, you thought, okay? So basically the other guy, the other American that's in a Russian prison is there for espionage, for being a spy, basically. He has several citizenships, several passports. I'm pretty sure he knows several languages. But, you know, as a company that, as a company, as a country that's being spied on, they felt like he is somebody they don't want to give up because how dare you come up here trying to get our news. But Brittany Griner, who was somebody that was caught with like, CBD oil or vaping oil, don't get me wrong. She was a little bit less valuable to them, but absolutely a political pawn. So anyway, 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 for the people that said that um Biden should have tried harder, it's crazy to me because I did not know y'all were politicians and I didn't know y'all was even there for the negotiation. That's crazy. Why y'all didn't tell us? Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure they did try. And not let's get this clear. That man got arrested while Trump was the president. And they were in negotiations to exchange him for the same guy that we gave up, and Trump didn't want to do it. Yeah. But of course, Trump them is gonna go on his little social network and make that statement and make it seem like Biden fumbled the bag. Baby boy, you left him in yeah. there. You left that man in there. But anyway, I'm glad she's home on the list. But I'm gonna say this: when y'all go to the other folks' countries, you was not on Camelton Road, uh. and that's not the victim blame. But I feel like when we, especially a place like Russia, places like Dubai, even places like Mexico or whatever in the world, you have to understand that there are different laws. And I'm sure Brittany knew this. And I'm, I remember back in the day, Brittany Grant used to be in a lot of mess all the time, pop culture related. But I'm just saying, like, really, you just got to be careful. And it could have been an honest mistake. I understand that. But y'all got to be careful, man. You got to be careful. Because the our government do not owe you rescuing you. Because in reality, she did break the law. You know what I'm saying? But because they, they gave her a dramatic sentence because they wanted who they wanted back, that's what happened. Because, I mean, in reality, any of us could travel to one of these countries, they could snatch us up and say something bogus. Yeah. Um, I don't do that. I don't even take weed in different countries or nothing like that. I think I did. I took it to Mexico before, but I would never fly overseas. Why do you do that? Because, I don't know. It was in my bed. I mean, I, I didn't fly with it home. Oh, are you saying you took... I okay, took well, I don't want to incriminate you. You saying you don't want to what? I don't want to incriminate you, but I'm just trying to understand what you were saying. I took some weed to Mexico, but I would never take nothing like that to, like, Spain or... You know. How you get it through TSA? Mind your business. I'll... Well, I'm just, I'm just asking. I'm not understanding. You brought it up. Well, I live in California, and okay. you okay. can travel with weed. Okay, so it wasn't illegal. I'm just trying to understand. I, okay. Now, I wasn't leaving from California, though. All right, let's keep it. I was let's leaving from going. Atlanta. Okay, so, okay, yeah, I won't ever be trying to... Th- I don't even have pepper spray. I don't have no no pocket knife. I don't have a multi-tool. I don't even got sharp nails on my keys. Okay. 
I can't do it. But I am glad glad Brittany Griner's home. But I do I, I I hate that situation happen. But I do want I see a lot of stuff where people be traveling internationally. They be fighting. They be doing all kinds of mess, getting caught up in mess. Just be careful, y'all. For real, traveling is amazing. But that is a regular functioning country, just like we are. So if somebody come here, they commit a crime, they can get arrested. It's just the same. It just applies everywhere. Yeah. You go. Um. So I don't. I haven't commented too much on Brittany on the on the on it because I'm just happy that she's home. Um, I don't know too much about that area of politics to even put an input on what the trade was about. But in my in my head, in my little world, I'm like, girl, I don't think it was that deep. But I, I ain't gonna say nothing because I don't know nothing about it. It ain't that deep in the U.S. It's deep over yeah. there. So I was like, whatever, you know. Kudos. Yeah. That made my girl cut her hair off. Hopefully, she kept her dress. Put it back on. <laughs> oh yeah, because she can get them put back in. Yeah. <laughs> My cousin did that. Okay, so I wanted to talk about something else that happened on social media. Uh long story short, there was this video going around of these nurses talking about their ex working at the hospital, and of course it was Emory and oh, it was. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know that was from Every there. time it is a mess it'd be in Atlanta child. Damn. So, okay. To me, the stuff that they were saying was not that bad. But I understand why they got terminated because they are in a job where the things they were complaining about was literally basic patient yeah. care. Like these are people who our lives are put in the hands of, especially in a place or in a nation where the disparity of black people are basically like the the the, the quality of healthcare for black people in this nation is is terrible. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about people in oh, Hazel. We talking about the death the, the, the death rate when it comes to birth and we talking about oh, people yeah. who not getting a proper diagnosis. We're talking about just things that I've read over the years. Now Atlanta is a very black city. It wasn't just black nurses in this video, but I I feel like imagine imagine you having something going on, you talking to your nurse and they don't believe you and they found out it was one of them nurses on that video. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Emory is not like a small time hospital. They have a very prominent name. They have a university. It's a big deal. So for y'all to be on the internet talking about things that is literally part of your job is wild to me. And I understand being a nurse is not easy, bro. I don't think people realize what all nurses deal with. And it's not even easy to obtain the degree. We ain't even talking about the day-to-day job. It's to even to be certified to be able to perform the job. But it is like the customer service of all customer yeah. service. You talking about you got threw up on at the club. <laughs> Default get boo booed on, cussed out, probably be physically assaulted. It's a hot mess, but I think that people, I see this a lot on social media. A lot of people are getting way too comfortable with posting stuff from, from work. Yeah. I think that that should be separate from your personal life, especially since it's so easy to go viral. And even with the little information about what company you work for, it's not hard to find you. I also see this a lot with um soldiers, like people in the military base. And maybe there's no policy for them, but some of the stuff they be doing, I'm like, these are people we got defending us. I don't think you need to be posting. Yeah, um, I think that everybody, I mean, we're in an age where everybody wants to be cool and then, of course, now that you're able to make money offline, especially making those type of videos, you're doing certain things to go viral. So they know that it will go mm-hmm. viral. And I think that <clears throat> I think that I know people say this all the time. It's just like something cliche, but attention is a hell of a drug. And, and people be addicted to that. Like, for real, for real. Like, I know that people work you know, in their careers, and they may be doctors or whatever, lawyers, but I do be feeling like sometimes they have, like, some sort of itch to scratch. Like, I wonder if I can make it big off of social media by going viral. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because it's so easy. Because it's so easy. Yeah. And then you looking at these people and these kids making thousands and millions of dollars from being online. So they all want to do it. I think that people should just not do it unless you work in an environment where like it benefits the job. Like a lot of times when you yeah. work for, um, like what you like do, what I do, or yourself. like if you work for a record company, I'm trying to think of something outside of the beauty community and show. So like a marketing agency yeah, like, firm where your job is to advertise. You know what I'm saying? Phone. So you yes. can make videos mm-hmm. and, and that'll benefit the company. I think, mm-hmm. Sales. I think that, in in the medical field, 
there is a window for that because it's a lot of people who are scared to go to the dentist, who's scared to go to the doctor, scared, you know, as adults, and they or they just don't know about certain things. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to like informing people, especially like with this thing with RSV, here go a whole open window because a lot of people not watching the news and it's not in our face as much as COVID was. So this is a moment mm-hmm. where they could have just like made it, you know, kind of cool in a cool way, but just. Yeah, they can educate yeah. people, and that makes sense because you are actually extending your 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 job, yeah. basically. You are, but I agree with you. I agree. I so I totally agree with you. And I actually saw this girl on TikTok. I think about it. She worked for Target, and she would be reenacting scenarios with customers, and she got fired. And I'm just like, you are representing a brand. Anytime you associate your name with that company, I don't care if you off the clock, on the clock, whatever. It just it it's like wearing your uniform. Would you wear your uniform on your off day? Probably no. not. So it's like, if you don't want to be associated with that job, you need to separate it too. But I agree with what you said. Like if somebody like if there's, cause there's this black doctor I follow on TikTok and he always tells like medical stories or situations. He's like, Hey, this is something you can look out for. This is why I re- recommend this. And it's like educational. And so you building trust because your job really is around building trust. People's lives are in your hand. But if you'd be like, man, I'm so sick of these hood rats coming up in here. Yeah, talking about their exactly, baby daddy. Exactly, it's like, exactly. I don't know. Yeah, no, I agree with you. It's a way way to do it. And I hate that people like, I hate that people get off on like, I feel like we in an era right now where people get off on dark humor a lot more than before. Like, especially on social media, because the jokes don't really hit unless you attacking a certain group of people or talking about a certain situation. Now me, I'm not going to sit here act like I ain't into dark humor. To a certain extent. I mean, my my humor yeah, is so, dark. Exactly, me too. So a lot of this stuff I do find funny, but I also know that it's the time and the place for it. And I also mm-hmm. know I watch people get fired and canceled so much. I'm not typing nothing down, and I'm not even being in an environment where somebody can record me saying something, like, insane. Or I won't even say it out loud, you know, in general. I think that people just need to be a little bit more smart with they with their moves, you know? Yeah. Yes, have some tact. There is a time and a place for everything. And you know, you know, people always talk about freedom of speech, but you it does not exempt you from the repercussions of what those, those things that you said. So, you know, I, I hate for anybody to lose their job necessarily. I do think they probably intended to be harmless, but y'all literally are talking about people whose lives yep. are in your hands. Like and I also think sometimes stuff like that can cheapen the job. Like I feel like that is a highly regard role to play a very stressful job. It really takes a lot of sacrifice. And it's like I now I go to the hospital and I'm talking to the nurse like they my homeboy because I don't even think they they that that yeah. serious because it's like oh girl y'all just being here on TikTok but yeah so anyhow I um like, do you work at Dollar General that. or the hospital no shade the Dollar General workers. <laughs> right <laughs> exactly I don't like that you just wearing squirrels to be cute what's going on but I have a lot of respect for nurses I have a lot of respect for anybody in the medical industry as well as the education industry and I would hate for anything to cause them to move them away from that and I, I'm curious to know if that would stop them from being able to get a new job all our nurse friends tap in let us know <laughs> I'm about to tap in the way okay. these bills beat my ass I'm finna tap in all banks tap in okay, I'm just playing right. JK <laughs> 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 okay, so Glorilla says she was looking for an assistant and she was paying five fifty a week. Was it five fifty every two weeks or five fifty a week? Five fifty a week. A week. Okay, it had the girlies in the uproar. And I also feel like I got an unpopular opinion about that too. Um, I don't see the problem. I think that people I do think that everyone should be paid a livable wage, but I also think that it is not unfair to pay people based off the skills that are necessary and the experience that you have. While Glorilla is hot right now, she is a very new art. She's still a new artist. Yeah, she is a very new artist. She might have shiny clothes, but that does not mean she has money. It does not mean her, her label has a lot of money for her. And it does not mean that working for her at this certain rate won't allow you to experience an exposure that's necessary to grow into your career. If I, I used to want to be a, a personal assistant when I was younger, like before I even went to college. And that would have been perfect for me at 18 years old, you know, with basic skills, tending to somebody's needs, scheduling stuff. You really learn, you I mean, you really learn customer service skills in the industry. You yeah. know what I'm saying? 
organization, you dealing with conflict resolution, team building, you name it. But anyways, I also feel like, so um, growing up, I used to always look up to Rashawn Ali. She was on one of the morning show hosts on the Ryan Cameron morning show. She's done several other things, but that's just how I was introduced to her. And she was a personal assistant for either TLC or she was for Left Eye. One of either the whole group okay. or one of them. But I remember thinking like, wow, okay, Rashawn Ali was a personal assistant. She ended up getting into radio. I wanted to be in radio. So I looked at that as my way to like network and get myself into the career I wanted. I cannot imagine these big grown 35 year old tweeters applying for that job, sharing their opinion about something they wasn't even interested in to begin with. On top of that, well, really, did, like, um, it's something at least from what I've seen from stories you shared or I've seen online, like, these people travel the world with yeah. them, you know what I'm saying? All expenses paid travel. I don't know if they food get necessarily paid for, but I can't imagine that they if they cater an event or something like that, that you wouldn't have your food. I think there are definitely perks, is what I'm getting yeah. to. And so, while 550 a week is not a whole lot of money, when you think about stuff like that, you literally probably don't even have to pay for your housing because you ain't even got darn there. And so, for somebody that's between 18 and 21 that really wants to get into the industry you perform my oh my god i have a perfect example so i had a co-worker i don't want to say we worked there but my this girl she works for she's a um she's a i know she's a president or a vp at qc but she literally was an intern for a, a rapper at the time who was hot at the time literally and this girl is a big dog at qc now imagine if she would have been like and I, I don't think she was getting paid that much i remember some conversations we had and i just feel like you look at stuff but just solely off the money and you will never have an opportunity you look for. You cannot pressure these folks to pay all this dog on money because I saw somebody else talking about some, what kind of networking are you going to be doing when you making Starbucks runs? Let's not act like these people don't be in every room these people be in. They see how well you perform. They might want you to work for them. If you got a business to push, you got something, you got your marketing right here. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like I get that we're in that era of like fair wages and I'm, I totally agree with that, but I think that you need to consider all angles of what's being required of you. They are not looking for a coder, a project manager. They're not looking for somebody to do open heart surgery. They're looking for somebody to run errands, be an assistant, make things more convenient for them, just like a child would if you was a parent. Let's yeah. think of it like that. And as you get bigger in your career, like even if I look at corporate America, entry level administrative assistance, which is what Global is looking for, don't get paid that much. They might get 40000 50000 6000 when they move up, like, and when they're in entry level, they might be the front desk yeah. person. But when they move up, now they support one person who could be the vice president of the department. Now they're getting eighty thousand dollars. And they move up from the vice president. Now they work for the CEO. They getting well over a hundred thousand dollars. Like all this comes with experience. You got to prove yourself. You got to show them why they should even be paying you more to begin with. And who's to say that that money won't grow while her career grows? It's just, I just hate. So again, this brings me back to social media. How they feel like they just know everything, and they, they everything's got to be a certain kind of way but, yeah um so i had this conversation with um somebody too because a few weeks ago summer walker did the same thing now yep. i will say that 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 is two different people and if i were to do a job like that i would lean more towards glorilla and i'll tell you why now if now i was really pissed at summer for posting that um <clears throat> for multiple reasons um, the post was just very unprofessional for one and in, in the way that she acts like I don't like when like you can be specific like say for instance no I'm not even gonna justify that shit it was fucked up like I'm not even gonna try to justify it, it was bad like I would never apply for a job that says preferably a woman or a, or a gay boy because yeah. different conversation for a different day but no so the post with Glorilla, I kind of understood that when I read it. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. This is something for a person that is um, in college and, and, and they looking for a job or or if they just got out of college, rather, because it's going to require a lot of time. So I'm like, maybe just a, mm -hmm. uh, fresh out of college and you got a degree in PR or journalism or something like that. And you need to you make get your foot, foot in the door. door. You want to make these connections. That type of work you cannot get with without like doing the groundwork like that. Like for me, when I first started doing makeup, I went like four years with with doing makeup for fifty dollars. I ain't gonna lie. What what rent I was finna pay with that? You right, know what I'm saying? Right, but right. but, I, but what if you was like, I want two fifty? You ain't got nothing to prove for it. Don't nobody know you in the makeup it. industry. I don't have nothing yeah. to show for it. I don't have the skill level for it. I don't have nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I, and I knew that. 
Like, I wasn't that type of person that was just delusional. Like, oh, I'm fine with it. Da, da, da. No, I'm not. But I'm, Trust I'm me. getting by. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting by yeah. and I'm learning along the way. I, I also knew that I'm like, okay, I can't go to school for this because it's not really a makeup school. So I'm going to just go work at Mac because people, I noticed that when people come from that, come from Mac, especially in 2011 and 12, you looked at as a big dog if you worked at Mac. Like, oh, you work at the Met counter, da, 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 that's a hard job to get, especially if, if you in the beauty industry, you understand how hard that job is to get, or it was. I don't know now. But it used to be very difficult. It took me two years to get hired there, and I had over six interviews. So I, mm-hmm. I literally... And that's discouraging. It's very discouraging. But I never quit because I'm like, there's no way out of this, uh, out of uh, out of me being like... And I don't mean no disrespect by this, but... I. The hood makeup artist, yeah. like a hood yeah. aesthetic. You know, I can't get out of this unless I go work at a store that can actually teach me and show me things. You know, how to work with people of all races, all skin tones. Da da da. Once I get, once I got that, now we can tap into a certain price range that I couldn't get into before, and it just comes yeah, with time. You, 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 like you say, you, you lay the groundwork. That's why I'm like, you know, not that you should get the job solely for networking, but that is your that is industry it. now. These are your peers. Yep. Like, there are so many people. Who was it? Lala? Didn't she start off as an intern? Got onto radio? Yep. Yeah, so Karen Civil. Like, these people were assistants. You know what yep. I'm saying? And if y'all think they was getting paid 100 grand, 80 grand, or even 60 grand, you got another thing coming. No, seriously. It just, it just and that work. could be coming out of Gorilla's personal budget for all we know. But it's just crazy. I don't think she went about the right way for announcing the job, but this is social media. She is prime social media age. <laughs> But that's like thirteen seventy five an hour in a world where minimum wage is seven twenty five with no travel. Yeah, so and no skills. If you living with your mama, baby, assisting it up, assisting it up. Because I'm you, sure if I would, I swear to God, if I was eighteen or you know out of high school and I seen that post, I promise you she would have got my contact info. I put on everything I love because I didn't even know how to get into that. I literally wanted to do what Rashawn Ali did. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna just be somebody's assistant. Now, obviously, I've grown up to realize my boundaries and the type of work environment I want. But at that time, I didn't have no experience. I ain't have no for real. Experience. Also, living witness oh, here, those experiences um, set you up for bigger paying experiences. Like you, I've had, I've had. I've had so many people that like tell me that I'm charging too low and they'll add on a whole $1,500 on top of what my rate was because of the stuff that I've done before. And they're like, you shouldn't be charging this. I don't care if you don't have a manager or an agent or whatever. You've done these things that people who have been doing makeup longer than you have, and they haven't even reached this or, you know, in general, people don't get this far. So you shouldn't be lowballing yourself like that. Same thing can happen with you. Like you in that situation, but say what if what if you had your two year mark, two or three year mark, you don't want to work for this person no more, you want to move on. They see that- And you don't think you met nobody? Exactly. <laughs> Come on now. And these people, and I don't know what Glorilla's intentions are, but these people be getting cars. The social media presence alone, because it says that climate. I mean, yeah, as an assistant, they do be oh, buying and cars and stuff. Like, I, like they do. They, they, I mean, it'll be like a little Corolla or whatever. But it's, you don't pay Who for cares? It. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I don't even care about all that. It's it's the it's the capacity. It's because pe- uh, it's people that's out here paying for their own studio time just to get somebody to hear their song. And you telling me you wouldn't take that five fifty a week job as an assistant to just for your son to conveniently be in the car while y'all so, riding? Not your son <laughs> Come on conveniently now. being in the car while y'all riding. Why are you like this? So you don't want low pay. You don't want people who was born in it to win. Got it. Okay. <laughs> all right. Now let's get into the real topic. <coughs> you okay, Paul? RSV. I, that's not okay. funny. Okay, y'all, listen. We've been waiting on this Tory Lanez trial for the freaking. Before you long, start, before longer. you start, the T just um, fell in. They said Tory taking the stands tomorrow, boo. Well, I saw that his lawyers wanted him to do it, but is he going to? Is the judge going to prove it? I don't know. I hope so, because this is getting too intense. Yeah, that cross-examination going to be crazy. But, um, okay, y'all, let me tell y'all this. Now, from the beginning, I already told y'all, I always stood on, I don't know who did it, because I was not there, and we're going to let it play out in court. 
But once I started playing out in court, man, my theory changed every day. Yeah. I mean, this is the messy, bro. I wish LA allowed um, cameras in courtrooms, bro, because I need to see the facial expression. I need to feel the energy in that courtroom. But y'all, it's looking like Kelsey and Tori probably shot Megan. That's what it's looking like. And we don't. Will, will we ever know? We don't. We won't. We just won't know. Everybody lying. Megan lying. Kelsey lying. Tori lying. And I do not care who mad about it. I, what I don't understand is why Megan, the victim, left out so many important details on what happened to her that night. Why did she say that there was no her fight? And Kelsey I, said I, that I they understand. keep saying that they it was no fight. They bumped into each other. Why would she say that though? I don't understand. Yeah, like why is I'm that a part, you, why is that a you part of the story that you have to leave out? That's what I'm saying. Okay, so a couple things. So I know that a lot of people were upset that they were talking about who her sex partners were, but I think people need to understand what a motive is because I think they were trying to establish it that Kelsey had malicious intent against Kelsey because of that allegation. And so therefore she had reason to shoot her. That was the defense. The defense is Tory. The prosecution is Megan, just so yeah. we clear. And so if you want to prove your client is innocent, you need to do everything you can as an attorney to come up with reasons on why your client did not do it and did not have a reason to do it. But yeah, I feel like this is my logic and it could be, it could change next week. Maybe by next week we'll have a verdict, but I think that everybody, especially Megan was very drunk this night and probably does not remember everything that happened. Now that I can believe to the things that, and due to the things that they do remember or how they feel about what happened that night, she just went with Tori shot me. Now, she could have known if Kelsey shot her, she could have known that. But she probably felt bad because of the accusations about her smashing. Well, because she had sex with Tori, who was also having sex. And I could be wrong. And I don't give a god darn because I don't know nobody involved with this. So, I'm, you know what I'm saying? But either she don't know who really shot her. Or she's putting this on tour because she's mad about the situation that happened. Now, I hate that she acted like or said that there was no fight when the the eyewitness today saw them jumping her, basically. Yeah. Uh, which I think hurts Megan. Even though Megan is not the one on trial, if you really are passionate about this person who shot you to get to get um, charged, you got to share those kind of details. Then we go on to Kelsey, who had who, who was granted immunity to take the stand, only for her to not say a god darn thing. But now I understand why it seems like she took immunity, because she was a shooter and probably was the first shooter which is crazy yeah. to me um on top of that i hate even though i think that the kylie situation is kind of irrelevant i do feel like it was necessary it should have been necessary for her to be a witness because it started at her house and she could probably add some clarity on the the temperature of the room you know what i'm saying because megan was mad about Tori for with kylie she left she came back even though she make it seem like that's not what happened it's just a lot of things that i feel like she either left out or she just is it doesn't remember. I don't know. But I do wholeheartedly believe Tori shot her. I honestly, truly, I didn't know who did it before. Now, what I would not be shocked about, and this was my logic before, is that she, even though she got shot, he might not have sh tried to shoot her. He was shooting. Yeah. And that was confirmed today by the witness because they said that he was shooting everywhere. So those bullets probably rich. I think I texted you. I was I think this bullet ricochet, which explains the bullet fragments, but that doesn't justify because bullet fragments can still kill yeah. you. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying that while he he's probably going along saying he didn't shoot her because technically maybe he didn't, but she did get shot as a result of his actions. Now, I um also what I felt like because they found both Kelsey and Tori's fingerprints on the gun that they were probably fighting for the gun, which could have left led to the bullet fragments. But it sound and it and from what the witness said today was that the shots came from Kelsey, seemingly came from Kelsey first. He saw Tori reaching for it, and then the shots went off. And it probably was because he probably pulled the gun out of her hand, her finger on the trigger. Now they, you know what I'm saying, woo-doo, woo-doo, woo. And they never tested um, Meg, uh, Kelsey's DNA on the gun. And the DNA for Tori was inconclusive, which would make sense because it's his gun. And then you got her fingerprint on top of it. But you got the material of the gun. It's getting smudged. It's really not clear. So now the only thing we know is the, the gunpowder or whatever the residue was on their hands. And how else would it get on your hand? If you ain't had a gun, if you weren't shooting, you know yeah. what I'm saying? 
So I feel like it is very possible that there will not be a guilty verdict in this trial because it is very unclear. Now, I think the only saving grace is if Tori testifies and gets cross-examined and if the witness from today is deemed like sufficient. Because I do think that the witness today probably is the most non-biased person involved in this whole thing. There's no benefit for them picking a side. But what I do think is funny is that he was brought on by the defense Tory's team and then identified Tory as a shooter. I'm pretty sure they was not expecting that. He basically pulled a yeah. Kelsey. He said <laughs> he came in and said, I'm going to tell you exactly what I seen. I don't care what they talking about. <laughs> right. Um, he, he, the short one definitely shot. Well, when they kept saying the short, I'm like, okay. <laughs> he going to get mad again now. And, and I, I want to know exactly because what would be the reason that Justin is hiding, though, the security guard? Well, number one, he was the closest witness, and he could have been threatened. He could have been – I hope he wasn't harmed, but I feel like he – If he so is one, harmed, if, then it's going to look guilty. Yeah, but clearly the guilty person don't give a darn. He just beat up August Alcina. When people are desperate, they'll do anything and think about the repercussions later. Now, I hope this Justin guy is okay, but I think that a reason for him to disappear, he, so somebody said that he was at the World Cup. World Cup over now. So I don't know what's going up with that, what? but he could be trying to do that because of, even he, maybe he wants immunity. Did he shoot too? I don't know. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure there's um there's some illegal tie-ins for not showing up in court, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I feel like it. I can't wait for this to be over. I genuinely hate that this even happened. I don't I know I don't even if I'm not a fan of somebody, I don't want any harm to come to them. Nothing justifies somebody getting shot unless they are the aggressor and you are trying to protect yourself. And it don't sound like she was physically harming them, so they was jumping on her. I hope that um, you know, this will I know every story I've told they probably came with a little lesson with the making situation, man. You re- show me your friends, and I'll show you a future. But I wonder, I wonder if there everybody. were signs that you know that Kelsey may have been like this type of person. Or now, now Tori, yeah, he has a bad background. But I Always. think that when it's it comes to dudes, girls are a little bit more lenient because we, even myself included, sometimes like I'm not a girl, FYI. But I'm just saying, myself included, I feel like this too. Like sometimes you just want a bad boy. Or like he's not even cute. He half her height. But people can talk a mean game, especially when you got game. Yeah, you're right about that. So and money. You got game and you got money. And he was up. So it's yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? That that is neither here nor there. Cause I've seen some of you would gag at the, the relationships that I've seen. And cute literally doesn't even matter. So I don't even yeah, know why. So I, said I mean that, I, I get that, I get dude. that, but I Who honestly no think that this situation and then, of course, stuff around me that I see all the time has really just changed the tune of, like, the people that I need to associate with with dating. Now, granted, I could be dating a soft-talking nerd. That don't mean he ain't no serial killer. You know what I'm saying? Wait, what are, you, what are you trying to say? Are you saying that she shouldn't have messed with him because he had violent tendencies? Yeah, he, was a, he has a violent background. What about the fact that her friend was messing with him first? You don't think that should have been the um, first stop? That too. That I don't got nothing to do with that. That's that's a that's just that's just her, that's some personal messy personal. I don't know because it's giving bad friends. It, from yeah, all and then also they lying so bad that they probably was in like a three way thing. One of us gonna get it, and when we get in, do da da da. People do stuff. I would believe that if they didn't also mention all the other people. But, you know, and that's their business, whatever the case is. But I think that all of them are terrible people. I'm sorry. I don't care. I don't. Th- I think that all of them got a, a lot going on. And I hope this has taught everyone a serious life lesson to be careful the type of person you are, the people. Be careful the type of people that you have around you. And be careful of your actions because they all have repercussions, mm. both positive and negative. Mm. And just because make people make cool songs and they can twerk and all the other good stuff does not mean that they don't have a dark side. And everyone, including your favorite actor, rapper, artist, is pretending. Just so y'all know. Every last one of them. So they all got on their customer service face. And I don't want to say too much because I know Chris is in that industry. But I'm saying I hate the girl got shot, but I hope this, you know, I'm saying she put the liquor down and can be a better friend. Oof. 
All right. Anything else you want to add before we wrap? How was the chicken? The chicken was lovely. All right. What you got coming up? I am going to Atlanta tomorrow. I mean Thursday. So I'm getting. I'm so tonight. Um, first of all, support your black businesses, and I say this before I say what I'm about to say. Um, <laughs> I realize that I'm about to start doing my own hair because it's getting a little <laughs> pricey. It's adding on to my um my hair budget. So my hair budget now, like in Atlanta, I think I was paying like monthly. Uh, almost roughly like seven hundred dollars for haircuts and retwists a month. Oh my god, that's more than what I pay. Hello, so I, I pay a hundred dollars every two weeks. Must be nice. So in LA, I pay two hundred dollars. So I went from seven hundred to two hundred, and so I don't get my hair twisted as often. I get it twisted like every four or five months just because I like to let my hair really grow and like um, I don't like I don't want my hairline to thin so I don't like all that pulling all the time. So mm-hmm. when I do get it done, I pay for it, whatever. But I, it's getting too expensive, so I'm about to try to twist my own hair before I go out of town. Get a haircut tomorrow, and I'm going to pack tonight, make dinner. Yeah, that's it. But I'm going to be in Atlanta. I really don't want to bring my makeup kit just because I don't want to work. I want to just really relax and just enjoy my time there. But mm-hmm. the bills say otherwise. You can use my kit. I'm a, I am I honestly think I'm going to leave it. I don't even feel like it. I, I promise y'all that. I can't. How long you going to be here? Eight days. <clears throat> and you don't... I mean, I think you should be intentional about it, but do you think you're going to regret not bringing your kid? A few things. So when I was in Atlanta this time of year, I didn't get a lot of bookings for one. And then it's going to be in like the single and and low double digits. People don't really get their makeup done. Where are they going? It's cold. Yeah, they're going to the living room. So I I haven't really got any inquiries as is for sure. So then I'm going to be back here for New Year's. So I'm, I would rather just work New Year's Eve in L.A. So Okay, I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, I, well, in that case, I think you should leave it and, and truly have a vacation. Yeah, I really need it. I really need it. I've, ha- I've yeah. had a really rough time these this past two and a half months. And partially, I think it's because... I need to go home. Like I need to just really be around people that I genuinely know and my family and my friends and stuff like that. I need to be around that energy right now. So I need that moment. So I'm, I'll probably just leave it. I yeah, back. I would. And uh, we need to get some food or something before you start being socialized and getting exposed to people who might have COVID. <laughs> we should um, go do something. Cool. What do you want to do? I don't know. Get some breakfast or some lunch or some dinner or something. Okay. Or something. I mean, dang, you don't want to see me. Okay. But um, when I tried to bring it up, somebody was had already dubbed my plans because they said they was gonna spend their time with somebody already. You. You was trying to link on Christmas Eve. No, I was just saying that we should link and record and stuff. And you was like, "Well, I don't know." Oh wait, wait! What days was it? Cause I just need to know what days I was supposed to go on a trip, but that got canceled. And how was I supposed to know that? Well, that was trip was bef- that was last weekend though. We just need to. I just need to know what day. I don't but it have a day because I don't have a car. So that's another thing. I don't know where I'm gonna be. For Where's gonna be staying at? Um, I'm gonna be between Zay and my sister. My sister moved to Lovejoy like a month ago, so she lived far. So okay. that's why I said I just well, gotta I mean, see where I'm I at. I don't really know. I won't know until I get there. I don't like where I'm gonna be doing. Okay, well you just let me know, but it can't be one of the holiday days. That's I gotta fine. I don't leave until the thirtieth, so I have time. Okay, well there we go. Next call. Okay, so um, I want to get a grill made. I think I gotta Ooh. do it before. I'm gonna have to do it before my um my. You birthday. should go to my people. Do you should go to my mm-hmm. people. They're really good. Who's up people? Um, I go to, I think I shot it in my own Black Beans of the Week, but I go to A Town Grills on Beaufort Highway, Black owned. Um, I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna go to 285 on, on the east side. Um, I'm so I wear a lot of gold jewelry, so I'm very, I'm very, 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 very picky about where I get my gold. And A Town Grills is one of the only places in Atlanta that do 14 karat gold uh, grills. Okay. That's the only one that looks sh- like it look 
it it looked like a grill, like it's expensive. I feel like when you go to the discount mall, it always have like that film over it, look rusty and dirty. I don't care. I, I ain't going. Here. Huh? I ain't going. Here. You said you're not going here. <laughs> Absolutely what not. What happened? <laughs> The price happened. The price. Come. I just. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, I'm not. I wasn't looking at the custom grills. I'm looking at the four, the VVS. Yeah, girl. Okay. You. I'm like, wait. Okay, 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 okay. Dang, what kind of carrots do I want? Do I want twenty two? I want girl, 10? get fourteen, and that's it. How many teeth that include? Um, I don't know. I do know okay, that. I, I, I do I'm know that he. The way he prices it. He always has deals, and the more teeth you get, the cheaper it is per tooth. So six teeth at the bottom is probably what you want. Yeah, and I want these. So you want eight. Okay, eight. So you want six at the bottom, and then two at the top on the side. Now this include opening. Okay, we're gonna talk on yeah. offline. Okay. But I want them for my, I'm doing, I'm going to do a photo shoot for my birthday because I need some new headshots, but I also want to take some pictures with my grill, but in my corporate attire. Oh, and then uh, I need that to be, huh? Very cute. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to do that for my birthday. So I need to get that done. So I don't want to wait too late to get the grill made. So I'm going to look into this, but I want, the, I want the full, the closed face on the bottom, but I want the top to be an open face on my, um, on this yeah. tee, but solid on the vampire tee. Are you trying to be like me? I'm just putting on. Oh, I did see you. I swear to God, I didn't. I am not. I know. I'm, you. This is very I popular now. I ain't. I ain't tripping. Now, no, we it's been popular. Okay. Anyway, so I want to get that done, and I want to um, I um, that's really all I got going on, y'all. I am trying to um, I gotta figure out where I'm gonna live. This next they call year. that black gold. That's what I call it. How much was that? You see this? I had this for two years and it's still shiny and I only got to clean once. Um, How much was it? Um, He charged me because I got three teeth, so it was a little bit expensive. It was about $390, $395. The, so for the 285 place on the east side, I know you don't like $75, them. $75, but... I know, I'm sure. For sure. Yeah, and I only want to wear it for the pictures. I don't want to wear it ever again. I just don't like how I look. I feel like it be looking cheap. That like you can look at it. I don't care. I wear retainers made out of plastic. Anyway, all right, let's try this thing. All right, y'all. So it's been another episode of OD Podcast. We went a little bit over time, say. Well, not really. Could, that'll be all right. We that ain't heard us a well, long time. I'm not complaining. Time. I'm just surprised that we 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 just had so much to talk about, and there's so much more. No, no, people like when it's a longer episode, Period. but. All right, y'all. Thank y'all. We got a couple of new reviews on the podcast app. Thank y'all so, so I much. Um, continue, to, continue to repost, leave reviews, share, tell a friend to tell a friend, submit topic updates, I mean, suggestions. Send in an advice letter. If you got some feedback, send us an email. Everything is in the episode notes. Hmm. Bye now. See ya.